So let's talk about the wedding now. Okay, Elena uh, and myself we were traveling through Greece, it's just the two of us with my mom, and we ran to Mexico. And um, I want to get for Michael a part of the Evzon costume, you know, the Fustanella costume, uh, and the Gileco. So I walked in this uh, store, and the lady uh, discouraged me of looking at some of the expensive antique areas because she thought I was a tourist, you know. So when she realized I started to talk to her in Greek, and I said, no, I have a dance troupe, and I would like for my husband. I said, he was very kind and very good to send me to Greece by myself with my daughter. <laughs> so I said, I would like to get something special for him because he is one of the instructors too. And she said, okay, you know, so we started talking, and I started doing uh, some bargaining, you know, to see how much, she told me the price, and I said, oh, you know, it's too expensive. So she says, wait a minute. So she calls, she starts talking, Vlahika. And she calls her daughter, who was an accountant, to come. And we did all the planning with her, you know, and I paid uh, whatever it was the price for the Gileco. For the first. Uh, when I was talking now with her, I see she had one of those postcards, you know, that they are like accordion that you see in Europe, mm -hmm. you know, the different pictures. And I see this wedding in the, this, you know, so I said to her, I says, one of the people from Metzovo, they have got married. She says, no, Copella. She says, no, my girl. She says, my uh, son, uh, who was uh, ectiniatros, uh, uh, veterinarian, uh, veterinarian. Uh, yeah, veterinarian. Uh, he married a girl from Athens who was a physician, and they married in Metzovo. They were going to get married in Metzovo. So the uh, girl, you know, the daughter-in-law to be, she says to her. Uh, Mana, are you going to make me a Metzovitiki uh, huh? costume to have, you know, for the future? She says, yes. She says, but only if you get married in a Metzovitiki wedding. So that carpal style that, you know, I was seeing that, you know, all these pictures, it was the son and the daughter-in-law that they got married in Metzovo wearing the typical costumes. So I look at Alina, and I always had this little seed in my brain, but I thought, you know, it never would happen in the United States. And uh, I look at Alina, and I said, first of all, Alina now, she goes like 27, 28, and everybody was saying, when is your daughter going to get married? When is your daughter going to get married, you know? <laughs> and uh, I look at Alina, and I says, you know, it would be wonderful if, you know, the time comes that you get married, you know, I says, ah, she, you know, we, we don't have the groom yet, that you're talking about getting a wedding, you know? So now she meets Nico through uh, Nico's brother and his wife at the time, and uh, they go out, and it was a blind, a blind date that my daughter, if we try to introduce her, she was engaged a few years ago, and she broke up, Alina. And um, when I would tell her, you know, so-and-so, you know, they have a nice son, she would say, are you nuts? Are you crazy? No way. She meets with Nico from that night on, they went and they saw the, the play um, a Nuisance or um, Nonsense, something like that. Uh, they saw it and after that they never separate. They start going out and everything. So when she was going with him and I came from Greece, I was in Greece again. I came back from Greece. This was a different year. Mm -hmm. I came back from Gre Greece. My, my mother in Greece, she says, because Michael told me that she's going with a Greek fellow. and. Uh, I have a funny feeling that she's falling in love with him and she, he's falling in love with her. So my mother started making bubunieres. <laughs> she started crocheting bubunieres. She says, we do it, you know, uh, the way. old fashion, oh. you know, she goes wow. crocheting it. And uh, so I said, Mama, you know, I says, it's going to be a, a nice wedding. I says, you know, how many you're going to make? 500? She says, I will start making it. So she bought the yarn and everything, started making. <laughs> no, no plans yet. So when I came and we were talking with Elena one day, I said, wouldn't it be wonderful, I said, if you had, like, this lady saw this. And also she gave us that, and I have it someplace, but I, I have to find it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> if, if she uh, can, uh, if you can get married the same way. And Elena says, yeah, sure, no way, you know. And Nico was married before. So she says, how can I convince Nico, who has already been married before, you put a fusanella on and get married. So uh, we thought, okay, we'll talk to him. So we talked to him, and he got just delighted. He says, I'm going to do it. You know, wow. I love it. It's wonderful. So then we decided also that it's not going to be the highlight of the wedding. We're not putting a performance on. Mm -hmm. We're putting it as an ethnic because our family is so involved. 
with this kind of a culture, you know, with the dance mm -hmm. and the song mm -hmm. and everything. But we don't want this to take over the religious part. To overpower the to religious part. To overpower the religious part, part you know. <coughs> so we said it's going to be a big secret. We're not going to say to no one what's going on, not except... Not even our parent, my parents knew about it. Yeah, except the immediate family, you know, my kids. And then my brother was here, and he overheard us, and his son and daughter was involved in the wedding party. So Alina says, okay, I says, what do you want to be? Now, you know, I says, because we, I come from different areas in Greece. I mean, I was born in Piraeus, raised in Athens, but my roots are from different islands, from, from Constantinopoli. So I says, my dream was to have a Yazana's costume from Evia, that it's a very elaborate. The, ju the jewels, if you think uh, the Caraguna has a lot of jewels, this is like five times the jewels. Mm. It's, it's very elaborate. So it's funny, it was be so hard. Then I knew I had met. It was like a puzzle. God made things happen. I had uh, become good friends with Katie Fragiadakis. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I tell Katie, I've talked, I've talked, you know, that's what's happening. And she says, oh, what the girl wants. So we decided. It would so Ketty is a costume maker in Greece, right? Yeah, Fregadak. You should explain I know, but who Ketty is. Yeah, who is Kathy? Oh, oh okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. Okay. We know, <laughs> yeah. Costa knows, but yeah. nobody else Katie knows. Ketty Fregadak is, is a costume uh, maker and designer, and she does very authentic work with the she, costumes. She was with Dora Stratton. And she was, uh, she was the protege of Dora Stratton, and then she became the wardrobe the, the mistress. Wardrobe, uh, mistress of Dora, Dora Stratton. And her husband also was involved with Dora Stratton. So, but and, she left Dora Stratton and has a group and, called and she the developed, Athenian Dancers. I don't know if she still has it. Well, she did. The Parthenon okay. Dancers. The Parthenon, 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 Parthenon Dancers. Parthenon Dancers. Parthenon Dancers. So anyway, I told uh, her, and I said, I think my daughter wants to be a Caraguna. And uh, she says, I will look all over now to find antiques mm -hmm. for her. So Elena's costume, 90%, it's all antiques, her Carguna costume. Uh, and uh, then we had Nikos, uh, the groom's costume. Uh, he saw the book, because he was not involved at all with any of the dance. I mean, he knew what his family was from Peloponnesus and stuff. So he liked to be an officer. So, like a Capodistria or something. So he saw the costume, you know, with a very heavy embroidered uh, jacket and uh, also the spats that they were very embroidered. So I told uh, Kat Katie and she did all that for me, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, then my aunt, uh, my mother's youngest sister was coming from Greece. I was so concerned that they were going to ship things and then would not be here mm -hmm. at the time for the wedding. So my aunt decided to come, and she was the one who brought all the costumes. And I made, I made the, yeah, uh, this is, uh, see the, the spats? Okay. So the, oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, keep talking yeah, about the costumes. Yeah, the spats, cost uh, they're very heavy embroidered, you know, the, what he has on his legs. And the back of his vest is just beautiful, oh, it's very... On. It's extremely uh, embroidered. Okay. And then Katie said to me, because uh, the Caraguna's uh, um, kerchief... We have a, a synopsis to, video of this, too. Ha has to be black. The kerchief, as you know, the Caraguna's kerchief is black. Right. Mm -hmm. She says to me, she's going to be a bride. So what you do, you go and get some very fine silk material. And uh, then embro embroider on the back yourself with whatever it will be significant, significant for your family. Mm -hmm. And uh, embroider it and fix it. And she showed me how to tie it and how to put all the jewels on. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father-in-law used to draw mm -hmm. uh, two birds with one stroke. Now, he didn't know when he was doing it that this was the idea that I was going to copy it and put it on the back of the, of the scarf. And I embroidered it and my mother's sister came and she made me, she helped me finish it up. So now the girls, uh, they were from Nausa, the, it's the Desfina costume. And again, it was not because we were from these areas, it was because we thought it would make a nice, you know, uh, bouquet of pictures sure. for, the, for the wedding. And uh, when I was in um, Naples, in Florida, where I'm six months out of the year, my friend, he says, before he, we knew even uh, this was going to happen, 
he says, I have a Mitsubishi Mitsubishi costume that uh, it's you know more like uh, Macedonian or Mitsubishi that I would like you to take and maybe you want to copy it. So when this happened, I thought it would be great uh, for the wedding. And I made all the costumes, but they're inside now. You have to show the other picture. Uh, the black costumes that you wear, the Mitsubishi, the... Yeah, they push them out. Yeah. And uh, oh, the I made them. The, no, the men's The, the men's groomsmen. Costume. The groomsmen. The groomsmen, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then also the parents of the bride and the groom who were, de who were dressed uh, as oh part of God. the wedding. And uh, like I said, everything was just happening. It was like a puzzle. You know, mm. one year we work together. Also, I make uh, uh, I make cards with wildflowers, and I try. We try to do it also that it was like they will do in a village in Greece. Okay, or we didn't take them hand uh, given yeah. like they usually do in Greece. They mm. take them and they yeah. go to different houses and they give the invitations. But uh, Elena. Uh, asked me, says, please don't do that. Uh, we ordered the invitations, but the outside of the invitation, she went all around. She got um, different wildflowers. Uh, we pressed them, and then she made the invitation for the wedding, mm -hmm. the outside of the, and uh, all the flowers that the, she carries, and they all were all wildflowers. They oh. were all grown by a florist for us. Their crowns for the wedding, Your you Stephana. know, the Stefana. It was all they had uh, eternity, love. Uh, they all oh meant God. something, and they were They're they were wild, made. Wild Elena Elena has them, you know, there in a case uh, with her uh, scarf. Eva you know. and I have, um, over the years, uh, last few years especially, uh, given lectures uh, two or three times in Florida and in, even in Chicago, St. Andrews, on the history of Greek folk dance and song. And part of our lecture, it's a PowerPoint presentation is the showing of a special synopsis. Uh, Lena's wedding videotape runs about six, eight hours, something like that. And I've condensed it down to about 30 minutes of highlights of it. And later on, maybe when we're eating, or mm -hmm. uh, we will take a chance, we'll, we'll zip through it fast, but mm -hmm. you can catch mm -hmm. some of the highlights of them putting sure. their costumes on and everything, uh, and sure. seeing how they walk to the church. And also, uh, like I said, a lot of my friends after, they were very upset because they said, why didn't you have the uh, Tribune come out and, uh, mm -hmm. but well, we didn't the want... The Tribune did run it, after, you, after the fact. They had a picture in the paper. It was after the fact. No, I didn't. Or the Beacon News one. Beacon News, Beacon but News not, the tri not the Tribune. No, we didn't want, like I said, this it was, was not, uh, not only surprise, surprise like it a was... private affair. Yeah, it was a private yeah. thing for us. Oh, and you didn't it. want to do with the church. We didn't want yeah. to commercialize it yeah. or make it, Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, and deal. like people, they <laughs> said, why didn't you, you know, uh, make uh, this more, you know, to the other people? I says, now, I have thought about approaching the museum and giving uh, part of the video to the archives. I think this should go Definitely. together. Yeah. The video. Yeah. The only thing is I have, I'm trying to encourage my daughter and, and I have to find, maybe if you have some sources, you can help me out. We have to give her video because eventually it's going to lose its color. Oh. She has to make it into a DVD. Yeah. Oh, give it to us and we'll do it. Really? Okay, uh, because it's a shame, you know. Uh, this is something that her daughter should have, her grandchildren should have, you know. Sure. Uh, so anyway, it was uh, we didn't have no organ in the church. We had only we had Father George. That he used to be he's down in Champagne now. Uh, he used to be at Peter and Paul. Mm -hmm. He was one of the chanters, and then um, uh, uh, Nico's brother. They were the chanters. And uh, when the bride was coming in, it was not, you know, the um, bridal marching. It was more hymns. Mm. So, and uh, what else? Didn't also who walked Elena into the church? Oh, uh, I have that tradition. And mm. I, I uh, decided a few years ago that uh, a mother um, in this country, see, in Greece, the parents, they don't part participate in taking the bride, I mean, up to the door outside of the uh -huh. church, and then the groom comes and takes the bride and walks in. But uh, in here, I always felt that the poor mother, she's taken up. It's like, you know, I gave birth, I had all the pains. They take up the girl, and uh, then the father walks in, you know, like a you know, peacock <laughs> with a daughter. Like, you know, I'm here. Yeah. So, and I told them, I says, and Elena from the beginning, she said, yes, but I did with my son. 
I have done for all three of the children. Uh, we walked my son down the aisle, the two the parents. Two of you, yes. And uh, so with Alina, it was both of us that we walked the bride down. Uh, and we did, again, in the church, we didn't have the typical flowers and stuff to make the church, you know, but we had an arch. And it was, again, all with flowers that you would go in the fields oh. and pick. Well, yeah. It cost quite a bit because, you know, it was not the usual, the, the usual but right. it, was, it was lovely. It was the, very nice. One, one interesting little sidelight was, uh, uh, I don't know if she mentioned it while I was out of the room, um, the secrecy that we maintained on this. Uh, the one of the little brides, major flower girls. Oh, no, I didn't um, say. This was a relative of Nico's, a, a niece of hers. Bill Vranis, yeah. I don't know if you, you probably know them. Girl right? was uh, 10 or 12 years mission. old. Yeah. How old? 10 or 12. No, no, she was seven. She was seven. <laughs> she couldn't be, because she's just graduating from college. She's already graduating from college. All right, she was seven, seven <laughs> or eight years old. She was seven, Michael. Se seven years old. Flower girl, 12 years old. Okay, no. seven, no, years seven years old. Seven years old she was. <laughs> Her parents asked her about her costume or her about her dress, and she told her parents, seven years old, that it was white with little flowers on it. She, a seven-year-old kid, kept the secret from her parents. Her parents did not know, and if you watch the videotape, you'll see that when the people arrived at the church, they were not allowed to go and sit inside. To go inside, they were kept outside. Until so even the people didn't know until the wedding took yes, place? Yes, yes. No one knew. Nobody knew. No, Not even my so mother beautiful. and father. They were all kept secret. His father, and excuse me, his father always uh, didn't like to be addressed with a tuxedo. So he was asking me. He says, you know, what do you want me to wear? Put one of those, you know. So I says, Dad, just put a suit on. Because I thought, you know, it's a, it's a horgatico wedding. Yeah. Oh, he, he felt so comfortable, he put a, a sport jacket on. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you see, the church... The, to, but to they keep, didn't know anything. To keep they didn't know anything. With the uh, tradition of walking to the church, being led by musicians, um, the bridal party across the street from our church is a large forest preserve. So we arrived early and drove way back into the forest preserve. Now everybody is arriving at church. And they're all sitting outside, or standing outside, wondering what well, Father Michael God's told name them is going on. That you then cannot uh, come outside, please. Father Michael came out and said, at this point now, uh, we had kind of timed it. Um, you're probably all wondering what's, what's going on. Um, you are going to be in for a treat. You're going to experience a very unique wedding. No, he didn't say any of these things. No, he just, no, no, you put, you put a lot of color in that. No, I told but, you, I'm doing the color for you. You no, can tell no, the story, no, but anyway. Father Michael told them that, uh, please, no one is going to be in the church. Right. I want everybody outside, uh, and you will, you will see. That's all he said. Now, it is like we have uh, Stoinov and his musicians leading us, uh, the whole wedding party, to the church. They hear all of a sudden music, mm. wondering what in the world is going on. And all of a sudden they look across mm. the street, and again, you'll see that on the videotape. And we walk to the church. walking, being led by the musicians. Some people thought, well, isn't that cute? They're wearing the, the costumes of a dance group, but they'll probably change into her wedding yeah, gown Yeah, but before and all that, that, some people, they thought that the dance troupe is leading the wedding party. The wedding party, yeah. See, that's what they thought. So it was but then... <coughs> they look around, and most of the kids that were, you know, supposed to be in the uh, dance troupe, they are there as attendants and uh, as uh, guests. Right. Okay. So then it was like a mirage, because they are coming and they are seen, and then Father Michael starts walking towards us to take us and lead the bride and the Traditionally, groom. the priest goes out and takes the hand yeah, of the bride and the groom them to the, to the and, church. and leads them into the church. And then people they start to applaud, and they think now, Elena is going to go inside in one of the rooms and put her bride of Ghana. You know, yeah. okay, you know, this was a show, but, and then they see us all walking in with our costumes. Everybody loved it. I mean, everybody, they were just very, very impressed, you know. And Stoinov did a beautiful job. He did an excellent yeah. job. And we did not have organ music. We had two psaltists. Yeah, I said uh, that. Who yeah. chanted, yeah, and uh, the wedding took place. And uh, there were um, a couple of things that, um, at the wedding, for example, the uh, kulura of bread, the oh, dance. And after, at, you'll, the, at you'll, the hall. You'll, yeah, at the hall, the reception, you'll see that again on the wedding. 
where the uh, bride presents to her the Bethera, this large gurula wow. bread with the kufeta. It is traditional it. that the Thursday before the wedding, that the, the bride makes um, the bread. So at least she will present to the Bethera. Mm -hmm. Sure, that, that she knows uh, how to cook. Your son is not going to starve. Yes. At least I can make bread. All right, who made the bread? It's me. <laughs> <laughs> but I decorate and everything. And then we did a dance. Uh, the girls and myself, we danced the Karaguna dance. Mm. And then um, uh, Elena, uh, Nico's mom wanted to dance with us, but she, she didn't know the, the dance. So Elena told her, she says, Mom, she says, wait, because I have a special thing for you. So she danced, and then the two of them uh, danced on the, you know, and Steinoff played a beautiful uh, oh. music piece. And the two of them, they danced, and uh, she presented the Kulura to her mother-in-law. So that was, you know, another thing that took place. My mother had made these beautiful puñeres that uh, I don't have one here, but you will see it in them. Uh, I mean, I don't have it handy now. And um, I had the women come here and help me because we had to stretch them before and, um, you know, starch them. And uh, I had a group of, you know, the brides and bridesmaids and everything, uh, like a party here, and they did all. So it was a very peasant, like, you know, I don't think they do them even in Greece now. You know, it was, it was a lot of work, but it was mother and daughter. How memorable. I mean, you remember everything. Yeah, yeah. mother and daughter working together and having fun. Because sometimes uh, yeah. the brides and mothers, yeah, they, they get so stressed, stressed yeah. about, you know, and uh, it was just, you know, everything was just wonderful. Prior to the wedding, we tried as hard as we could to investigate a little bit to see had this been done before. And perhaps it has, but we were not right. aware of it. Yeah, right. In Greece, as, as they as do far, it now yes, more. We even went to the island of Patmos uh, in Greece to mm -hmm. see uh, Peter Vranis, uh, Nico's brother, uh, his second marriage, to get married there. And the same thing. They got uh, dressed at the house, the band came, we walked to the church with the but organ. But not with uh, costumes, costumes. No, 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 no. But it was a tradition. But it still, it was Yeah, it was lovely. It was very lovely. Oh, yeah, Peter. And the, the house of, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful island. Uh, oh, I've been there. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure, especially because you're from the north, it's so close to Salonica. Who? Patmos? Patmos, yeah. It's not too far. Patmos is down. Anyways. How far is... Uh, Patmos is in uh, Dodecanisa, right? No, Dodecanisa. No, no, in Evoria. Patmos, we took a hydrofoil from Samos to go to it north. Yeah, right in the pure north. Anyway, we'll see in the map where Patmos is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not Dodecanisa. Not Dodecanisa, but no. it's. Anyways, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, it's not really close. It's not like the other island that's close to Salonis. So that pretty Fasso. much. Fasso. Fasso, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. pretty much uh, kind of wraps up the. Our daughter's wedding, as I said, it's uh, we don't know of any other wedding that took place like that. And to this day, people still talk about it. The Elena still has her costume, obviously, and Nico has and his she, costume. And she uses her costume. Occasionally, also. yeah, she does. But the uh, all the bridesmaids' costumes then were turned over and donated to oh, the Oh, that was another thing that I did. I, uh, I had ulterior motives. <laughs> uh, because um, when I made six costumes for the men, six or seven or eight. I don't know. Uh, for the men costumes, I said to everybody that you can have the costume. Uh, I'm not going to charge for uh, my work. I will charge for just the material, and it's going to go to the dance troupe. And uh, so that's how those costumes they have been, you know, used by the dance troupe. And um, the Nausa uh, costume, we order those, and the same thing. Uh, the bridesmaids, they paid a little bit, but the rest of it, you know, we mm -hmm. got them to be in the, stay in the dance too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's amazing how, that's why I got confused, how you were able to keep it as a secret if, oh, it you was, know, a few people, you know, knew it, but still. Believe me. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Believe me, it was. That was the beauty of the it. The shock yeah. and surprise in the people's face, especially Nico's brothers yeah. and sister-in-laws and, and my parents and. Um, His mom came here. And I had to show her how to tie the the scarf, you know, for the Nausa scarf. And then the, the des, desfina, desfina, desfina desfina kind. And uh, so, and I told her, I said, you cannot show any hair. But, you know, people, it's hard to express your, you know, for that. So anyway, by the night it goes over, the mine is still down here and hers is all the way up. <laughs> 
but and I said not jewelry. Oh, she has a bunch of jewelry on. But she's just a lover. She's a dear. But we're upstairs because become like Riftume, you know. And we're upstairs, and uh, Nico's grandmother was here, with uh, with her. They had gone out to find a dress for grandma. Uh, Nico's grandmother, she was in her nineties, and she couldn't go up the steps. Okay. That day, I'm in the I'm in the bedroom showing her how to do, and we have dressed her. Um, uh, Lola with a whole costume so she will know because she was going to be at the hotel with uh, Nico yeah. and uh, so to show her how this piece goes together all of a sudden you see <laughs> but the pastoni you know the grandmother comes upstairs <laughs> and um, so we said oh we have somebody who is the size of Lola and we try to see if this fits because you know we have the dance through I mean it was unbelievable oh, we have to think something really mm -hmm. fast you know but, uh, and oh, what the, the funniest thing was, when we went um, for the 4th of July or, or after, uh, we went over, because the, the wedding took place in September. No, it was way before that, what I'm talking about. Anyway, we had gone over to Lola's and uh, Paul's house, the Vranas's, and uh, we said, now the kids were engaged, so we said that uh, we better tell Paula and, and uh, Paul what we're going to do because they're going to be part of, you know, they have to wear. Mm -hmm. So there were all the other brothers and everybody here, there, and we said, uh, okay, I says, you know, now we'll wait till they leave. So everybody left. I think that Paul, uh, Lola and Paul, they started to think maybe Alina is expecting or something before she got married, because it was a top secret, you know? Yeah. So then when we told them, they looked at us and, I mean, it wouldn't have made any difference. They're such lovely people, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, they looked at us and they got all happy. And Paul says, that's wonderful. So he started hitting his leg and he says, we're going to dance. I'm going to love to wear. So everybody goes in, you know, uh, yeah. in, a, in a, yeah. accepting the yeah. idea, you know, that uh, it's going to be fine. Let's do it. So we didn't have no, my little grandson, Father Michael's son, he was not a year old. You will see in the quickly in the movie. Uh, I made a little Evans outfit Aww. for him, and uh, he put it on after the wedding because we didn't, if anybody saw him, they sure. would realize, you know. The um, boy who carried the Stefana. Uh, again, my mom had two uh, two uh, little uh, like doilies that when she was a young girl she had embroidered, and but they looked like the very old-fashioned embroidery. There were two. We put them together, and that became the, the pillow, oh. you know, of Elena. So everything had some kind yes, of, a, meaning, you know, yes. meaning. And um, the the young boy, I made his whole outfit. Now, when uh, Lo Elena came, I had ordered the uh, Kavadi, you know, for the mm -hmm. Nausa costume, the outside uh, Hileko. Uh, I had ordered it from Greece, but all the inside I made myself. So I had a sheet that I cut because it was easier to wash it and you know wear mm -hmm. it and everything. So I was I had her here for three days. And she says she didn't know how to call me, and she was calling Mrs. Cantor. She says call me Thea. So she says Thea, this was a sheet, and now you made to a dress. But seven years old, to come up, and her mother was saying now how you want her hair, and I would say oh, oh anyway she looks so beautiful. Don't worry because everything was going to be well, under you know, yeah. and. Um, she says, what kind of shoes? I said, oh, just plain white, you know. Now, you saw the, um, the picture, shoes. Mm -hmm. the shoes, they are the old-fashioned. As you saw, I was someplace, I saw them, I thought, my God, it would go perfect, because usually you're supposed to wear the black shoes with the costume. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, again, uh, Flagadaki Ketty, she says to me, no. She says, she's a bride, you know, you put white shoes on her. So, but everything was just, like I said, wow. God was, you know, mm -hmm. helping us. So it worked out just perfect. You want to pause? Sure. And um... okay, um, let's talk about um, some of uh, your family holiday celebrations. That any specific uh, events that uh, you remember, or any characteristics or well, specifics. Gr growing up as as a as a child, a young boy, we we lived out in the country. Uh, we didn't live in a city. My parents, when I was six years old, built a home that was out uh, from here. It takes seven, eight minutes to get to it, but it was definitely out in the country. 
uh, behind us was asparagus fields. As a little boy, I remember getting up at uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, strapping a hamper, which was kind of a metal uh, carrying uh, device on your side, and with an asparagus, a forked asparagus knife, going out and picking asparagus. And then we would bunch it up and cut it and box it and put it out at the end of the driveway and uh, a truck from Southwater Water Market in Chicago would come and pick it up and we, we sold uh, asparagus. That's where I learned to drive when I was 14 years old back in the back Horapi with the old Studebaker pickup truck. That's where I learned how to do my driving. So the only parea we had or company other than when we went to church to Joliet or into, this, into Aurora was my next door neighbor John Calamaras who ultimately became my daughter's Nuno uh, and our Cubaro, Maseji Stefanosi. And uh, uh, no relation, whatever, but George Calamaras next door, we used to call him Theo George, and his wife Theana, out of respect, uh, they were from uh, Mykonos. Uh, he was from Mykonos. And uh, her family was from Joliet, so we got to know a lot of the Greeks through them too in Joliet. Um, yeah, birthday was a big event in, in our family, but it still wasn't anything like your name day. And any time there was somebody's name day, invariably, I don't care if we drove to Chicago or we went someplace to Aurora, we always would end up at somebody's home for a, a, a big dinner and a, a celebration. And it usually lasted till the wee hours of the morning. And um, when I was young, as I said, we didn't have a church here in Aurora, so we drove to Joliet. That was our nearest church. Or Father Leonikis would come to Aurora occasionally on a yeah, Saturday. You said that. But um, uh, we would still go to uh, Joliet, and um, I was an altar boy, and I remember uh, we used to take the Epitaphio out, and I, that was a very, very solemn moment for me. I, I, I used to enjoy that. I, I, I liked it. It was, it was something about the incense, something about the religion. Uh, uh, the, uh, I'm at a little loss for words right now, but I remember... Uh, uh, going and uh, serving in the altar there and uh, taking part in the uh, religious ceremonies. And then uh, uh, Dad, with uh, some of other his Greek friends in Aurora, would go out to some farm and uh, get two or three arnia, little baby lambs. And uh, on our garage back at, at home, it was a tradition there. They would kill the lambs, you know, and then they would hang them up in the, from the rafters and they would skin them and then they would leave them there for a couple of days uh, to season it, whatever you want to call it. And I remember that, then they'd come and cut it up and uh, everybody would take some home, uh, our kubari, and uh, have roast lamb for uh, Pascha, Easter. I kind of carried that tradition in some respects here. Uh, I have in the garage one of these, I bought it in Greektown off of Halston Street, one of these rotisseries, and you can put about a 40 pound lamb on there, kefali and all. Um, for several years, I haven't done it in the last couple of years now that Eva has been spending most of the time Easter in Florida and I would go down there and spend Easter with her. But uh, when the children were uh, younger, we used to uh, cook a whole lamb here. And we'd go to church for Anastasi and come home, you know, like two or three o'clock in the morning, go to sleep for about an hour or two, get up, come outside because lamb on the spit with charcoal would take six, seven hours to cook, you know. So if you wanted it by Dio Trisi Ora Topoi, you'd have to start it at six o'clock to proi. Mm. So we'd have it prepared in advance, marinated, and we'd put it on the suvla and sit down and have some glicopsomi that Eva will have made, it's sureki, and some avga, and you will feta tiri, and of course, rasaiki, and usually by the time the the Arani was rather ready or was scupidia, <laughs> you know, from eating and drinking, and who wanted to eat Arani? But that was the best part, was cutting a little komati off of the Arani when it was on the suvla cooking, and the kids used to get it. And of course the neighbors, what the hell, they walked by and they'd see us out in the driveway <laughs> big, there with this my whole big uh, wedding. Uh, Arani. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now you see it on my big fat Greek wedding, but... Uh, they would stop and they'd say, what are you doing there? I'm cooking a lamb. Well, it's Easter. It must be Greek Easter. I says, yeah, it sure is. You know, oh, God, does that smell good. The whole neighborhood would smell good. But it's cooking. nice because also our Gregory, from the three children, he's keeping the tradition. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and he goes to Maryville where Anna Marie comes from, and they do the same thing. 
mm. you know, her papu used to do it, now Gregory has taken mm -hmm. over. So it's nice that, you know, yeah, the kids, they see the traditions, because sure. they're going to go. I mean, yeah. if we, you know, don't keep it, it's, I mean, they are, they have gone in Greece. You go to Greece and they, I went to, to Karistos, where my mom comes from, you know, where I grew up almost in the summertime. And I said, Theo, where is the Arlis? 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 Are you okay? <coughs> well, that... speaking about going to Greece... You want some water? Okay. Let me give you, you some water. Okay. okay. So, do you want to tell us what your experiences were like the first time you went back to Greece? Well, you know, obviously the first time I went, I met my wife. And, no, before uh, me. The, the, when you were going to go see, when you were going to see your grandmother? Yeah. Oh, when I, before I met her, yeah. um, yes, I did go to visit my grandmother to see her. She was uh, quite elderly in her 90s, and uh, uh, the house, which is still there, and I do own 50% of it, and um, um, and that's in was, Le, that's in Levidi, in Levidi, Levidi yes. And I went down into the room, and of course I have slides, but God knows where they're at. They're someplace in the basement of. Uh, this place where my dad was born, mm. the uh, Kravati Ti Kravati was really a part of the, uh, it was cement, you know, that came out from the wall, and it was there. You need to go patera su eki, you know, yayamu. And she was outside one day, sitting on the steps, and uh, she was sitting there kind of thinking, and I took a photograph of her, and that photograph, you want to pick that up, Ella? But she had that. also another one that got, she had a little ouzo in her hand. It's really pretty. Yeah, oh. yeah. That, uh, this picture here, I took a photograph of it and I took it to um, an artist here in Aurora. And uh, she painted this off of the colored slide. It was a Kodachrome slide. That was back before digital. I'm talking uh, 1950, uh, 58, 59. 60 yeah. And uh, she took the uh, picture and made a, uh, an oil painting of it. Mm. That's me. Nice. And is that, is that when you first saw her? Or was That's it... the first time and last time I saw her. I visited there. I was there, what? She uh, was in her 90s. Two or three days. Uh, and, uh, I'm sorry. And she went, she went blind. Right, right. She went blind Hello? after Michael left. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, it was the only time that uh, she saw one of the grandchildren yeah. of my Are father's. You really father. doing? You want to come oh over? my goodness. Okay, that you were here. Anyway. Um, okay. They couldn't come? No, he says he's sitting on the middle of his swing set and he's still got things okay, right. to do. Um, so I spent a couple, two or three days there. Since I have gone back to Greece, I you have uh, gone to. Uh, but I started to say also that your grandmother was overwhelmed. See what yeah. happened. What was her reaction when she saw you? Oh, cried and stuff like that. You know, you know, this was the first grandchild that she would have seen. Of the sons. You know, of her sons. Now, Mike was familiar also with uh, the uh, with his aunt because uh, his father's sister she had injured her leg, and my father-in-law brought her from Greece. Yeah, they'll find you. To take her to the doctors, and she had surgery and everything here. So when he went there, it was not completely like being, a, you no, know. I had a met stranger. the Athelfani. We had brought her over. She had surgery done on her leg. That she had, I think she fell from the muladi or something. Or or so anyway, and uh, she had some pins put in her leg and everything, and she got it. I remember one day, when the Athelfani was still there at the house at my mother's house, I walked into the house. And an odor hit me, a sour odor, just over overpowering. And I thought, what in the world is that? My tia Teofani and my mother had made trajana. Mm. And they had sindonia all over the, the carpeting and all the living room, the dining room, and everything. And, and they were drying when it. When she know. was in this country. Trajana to the trivis. Tia. See, it's, 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 it's a like dough. It's a sour, it's a sour, it's a, uh, sour dough like. Oh. Yeah, and they and, make uh, soup. They make soup. Soup with they it. They dry soup. it like noodles. Oh. Yeah. You know. But to make it's it. It's like it, you, a spezzo. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, you take the dough and you, and you to trivis and it makes like sikula. Yeah. 
but it's got a sour smell, and the whole house just reeked of that, you know. And I, re I still vividly remember but that. But they used to make it and preserve it for the winter, oh. you know, mm -hmm. they used to make it and dry it, you know. So when I went to see my yaya, I'd already, uh, Tia Telfani knew me. And, of course, um, all they had for facilities was an outhouse. So my father sent money, Estile Lefda, Naftiaksun Apohortidio for Mihaly, who was coming there. And the Apohortidio consisted of basically a toilet with a toilet seat, but you didn't flush it because it just went through. <laughs> yeah. It was on the my second floor, and it went yeah. through below when they had a bucket down there, and that, that was it, see? And, uh, but at least it wasn't going out to the outhouse, see? Mm -hmm. And uh, this was all done especially, and I remember I also got there uh, about an hour or so after I was there, because I noticed it was on one of your questions, my first cousin, Eleni, got ill. And of course, everybody was going around whispering, you know, and stuff like that. And I thought, what, what, what's going on here, you know? And, I, and all of a sudden, I realized when I saw them doing things like taking a piece of closti from her forema and burning it, and doing things like that, tin mm. matiasa. <laughs> oh, you do you? You the gave, evil eye. I gave her the you evil, evil eye. eye. Yeah. See, and, and you know, they were going through this process of prosefies and all that, and except except matiasun to ikopela. And I still remember that, you know, when and I when Did I they went make there. you anything special to eat? Or well, I remember some nice. cousins. Some cousins came and uh, visited, or Kubari, that my parents mm -hmm. had baptized, and I didn't know them from Adam, but they brought peristeria. They brought some pigeons, you know, <laughs> and as a gift, see, and they cooked them up and all that, and I, the last thing I wanted to eat was, was pigeons, see. <laughs> or dabs uh, or whatever you know, they were. You know. and they were pigeons, peristeria. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. They had brought them. And, uh, and I also remember we were sitting down and, you know, I was a college boy. I was a big man on campus. I knew how to, you know, to hold my liquor and drink and all that. So they brought some Redzina up from the Varelli. And my two cousins were about my age, too, drank me under the table. <laughs> <laughs> I was stupid, and they were sitting there laughing at me, see, because I was the Americanike from, from, America, uh, from America and... Uh, this, uh, but boy, was that good that I'd seen a homemade from the Varelli downstairs, you know. And um, so, how long did you stay there? I, mean, I was know? only in Levidi probably three or four days. Oh, okay. I was only in Greece altogether two, two weeks, weeks, and during that weeks, time, yeah. I had met Eva, and I was with her oh, family, and I was with my family, and all that. And I had that very unfortunate experience the first night I was there uh, with some Kubari who picked us up. And uh, from Ayer Varvara is where they had their home. Ayer Varvara, Pexoptin Athena. And uh, that first night I went to bed. I was dead tired. I'd been flying eight, nine hours. And I woke up in His the middle of the night. And I'm, and I'm saying, what in the world is this? You know? And I turn on the light. I just finished taking a course in college on parasitology. Oh. <laughs> And I'm looking, and there's Emata and there's Sindonia, and I thought, what in God's name is this? And it was Gureus. Gurgi. Gurgi. Bed bugs. Uh, bed bugs. And uh, I turn off the light, and then I turn on real quick, and they scurry away the minute the light came on. So I curled up, and I sat in a chair, got Ekla with my feet up, and I'm saying to myself, <laughs> the language I cannot use for the tape here. <laughs> and I was saying in so many words, Mom, I'm going to write you a letter, and you know what you can do with Greece. <laughs> oh, my God. And uh, the next morning, my tia Teofani says, She was from Levidi. Yeah, very, from Levidi. Very clean Yeah, lady. yeah. Horyo, you know, in the, in the Vuna and stuff like that, but spotless. These people are downtown as brummy. Anyway, she says, I saw your light on your bedroom all night. And I said, no, it's all right, nothing like that. So finally, I broke down, and I told her, I says, Kati, you know, she Oh my God, she says. So we went out shopping. When I came back, she told me they took the stroma, the mattress out, and hung it, and were beating it. And she says, we couldn't step on them fast enough as they were falling out of the mattress. See? So that was my very first experience with Greece. Not very good. And it was not very good. <laughs> but it got no, better after that. No, well, see, that's better. why, that's <laughs> why I said, when, uh, we, when I took him to the first cemetery, and he was very impressed with Halepa and all this, you know, and I uh, took him by our, you know, uh, family uh, at home and everything. Uh, I asked him, I said, you know what? So he told me, and uh, you know, I was so mad and so embarrassed as a Greek yeah, who lived sad. there. Oh, I thought, I thought that was it yeah. is 58. It's not, you know, in the middle of the war that they don't have sapuni and, you know, they right. don't have uh, mm -hmm. means mm -hmm. to clean right. themselves. Mm -hmm. 
But when, uh, when I was in dental school, a group of Greeks decided to organize, because there were a lot of Greek kids that went to dental school, uh, decided to organize, so they developed and started to, or, I was not, I got to be honest with you, the original founder of it, because a few other, they were more senior, I was about a freshman, sophomore in dental school, and these guys were senior, Chris Costis was one mm -hmm. of them, and um, a group called the Hellenic Dental Society. We met at Greek Town at one of, I think it was Roditis, I'm not sure, uh, or the Greek Islands, the Paleo Greek Islands that was uh, on, Jackson. on Jackson there. And uh, one thing led to another, and the organization got going. And um, They're still active. Oh, yeah. And in about 1970, I was the president of the Hellenic Dental Society, and then the next year it became the Hellenic American Dental Society. It changed names. And it still is. It still is active. In fact, we have a banquet every spring for all of the Greek uh, students who are in the dental. We used to have three dental schools in Illinois: Northwestern, Loyola, and Illinois. Now, Northwestern, Loyola are both closed. We only have Illinois, but we used to get thirty or forty, thirty or forty students from freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior classes that were of Greek descent. Mm attend the, this banquet, see? And, then they and we, give give a us, we give a scholarship. We have a big scholarship ball, a dinner dance where we award a scholarship, several thousand dollars to one of these Greek kids and everything. And I was president in 1970 or 71. And we decided uh, with a guy by the name of Ernie Panos, who is an orthodontist. Oh, you know Chicago, Ernie. <laughs> Ernie Panos. He's anyway. changed a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Ernie was back in those days was was very active also in the Hellenic Dental Society along with uh, uh, our Cubaro, uh, Bill Dracos and uh, Chris Costis and Tom Pulakidis. These are all dentists in the Chicago area that we um, decided that we were going to go to Greece and uh, the Illinois State Dental Society at the same time coincidentally is having a trip to go to Greece. Uh, kind of a continuing education and Danny Laskin, Dr. Laskin, who was the head of the Department of Oral Surgery, was kind of the leader of that group. So I called Danny and I says, Afto, Afto, you know, uh, we're going to have a group there. Why don't we meet at the University of Athens and all that? So that was, I want to say, 71 or 72. Anyway, Eva and I went the year before 71. and I met with uh, Dean Haralambaikis, who was the dean of the dental school. He was university. educated yeah, at the in University Athens. in Athens. He was educated at the University of Michigan in orthodontics and was an orthodontist practicing in downtown Athens, but he was also the dean of the dental school. And uh, we met, we got all the things worked out and everything, and then the following year, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the Hellenic Dental Society went there. Uh, there was a group of us, we were met at the airport. It was right about the time when they were having a little bit of trouble with the coup. It was during the junta. During the junta. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, I know some of the cars that came up to pick us up were uh, had cortinas all around, you know, and everything. And in fact, where Eva in a year Paris Gavis, um, Thea lived, uh, there were some prominent people. There were some prominent people living around there. And I was out one day with my camera, my video camera, and a and a soldier with a rifle came over to me and wanted to know what the heck I was doing there. And uh, he was, but Michael, I thought he was going to confiscate my camera for a minute But Michael there. also, you got the analog uh, yeah. machine. That, and that was so I went, I went way. to, uh, I went there with the Hellenic Dental Society and uh, we presented a seminar to the university. There must have been about 200 people in the amphitheater and I presented a program. A couple of other people spoke from the Illinois State Dental Society. I was the only Greek American that, that presented a program. and. Uh, I decided I wanted to bring something as a Doro. So I contacted a company here in the United States for a nitrous oxide analgesia machine. machine. What If you've ever been to a dentist and he gives you this mask on your meat, he laughing gives you the gas. laughing gas and nitrous mm -hmm. oxide. And I was one of the first men in Aurora to use it in 1965. And um, I got McKesson Company to donate one of these machines. See, And I took it with me. So we got it, we got to the airport, it's at the airport now, it's being held in the customs department there and everything like that. And I'm going to give the lecture on uh, office protocol management, practice management, and this machine, how I use it in my practice, and donate it to the University of Athens. Well, where's the machine? Well, the machine is still at the airport. 
Well, we go over to the airport, and the airport says we can't release it unless you pay a large duty yeah. on it and all this. And I said, Pidia, I'm donating this to, the, the to Greece, mm -hmm. to the university. It's a thousand dollar machine, and you want me to pay three hundred dollars? For those days, nineteen seventy was you know, a lot of money. Well, I had to give up my passport as collateral, and they let me take the machine to the University with Panos's, of Athens. With Panos's, um, he had his uh, Cadillac with yep. an alarm on that sounded like a police going yep. through Athens. We're, you we're know? driving the airport with a siren going. <laughs> I says that Alatikas with him, they're going to arrest us and throw us in prison. And you know, you get thrown in prison here that you're never heard of again. You know. So we finally get the machine back, I give the lecture, I presented it, we got handshakes, I got pictures inside, uh, photographs of me with the dean presenting this machine to the University of Athens. Lectures all over, back into the car, take it back to the airport. For all I know, the damn thing's still sitting in the airport in some warehouse over there. I don't know. But it, it, it was the mentality over there. I, I just couldn't... Uh, couldn't. So that was not a very good experience as far no. as... But uh, we did... Have a nice time. We uh, presented it to the to the um, university if they still have it, and uh, lectured. And uh, the the people in the audience were thirsty, thirsty for knowledge. They were thirsty to hear those what that days, Alaskan spoke on oral surgery and what I had to speak on nitrous oxide. But those days, also the industry in uh, Greece, it was yeah. very backwards. Now, thank God, it is advanced. She lot. has a cousin of hers that's a dentist in Karistos. So one day I went to visit. And it was an experience. This little peasant woman from up in the Vuno, mm. the Khorafi, who came down with the Muladi, you know, had a, a crown, a tiki, ikhetiki, and it was all ready to be delivered, see? Chriso, of course, Olo Chriso. And she came and, you know, her cousin says, Tora, esta lefta? So she opens up a mandilaki, the chitohi desi, you know, she opens it up. Probably she's been saving now for three or four months this left out the pirosi atotiki, the atotiki, see. And uh, her thea is putting it in, and she's pushing it on. This woman is hanging on, and it hurts like hell. And she's pushing and she's pushing and shoving it into place. And she's turning to me saying, Oreo, Fenneth, Oreo, Tinetis Po. Looks nice, doesn't it? How do you like it? You know, it looks good. I says, Yeah, it looks great. Then Remember. my cousin, my love, wow. first cousin, falls off the bicycle. And she breaks her front tooth. So yeah. Michael says, yeah, it's terrible, but he says, you know, you know the end of the world. So he tells uh, my cousin how to fix it. And she says, then, yeah, toxero, toxero. I know, I know, I know. But I don't have the material, mm -hmm. you know. So Michael says, I'm going to send you all the material. The next year, and, and I, when I came it. back, I did it for her. Yeah, but not two years after we Oh, yeah, went, that's true. We send the material immediately. She never did anything. No, I ended up you putting know? her in the chair So Michael uh, did for her in yeah. two years when we went back. But Michael uh, loves Greece. Yeah, I, I really enjoy Greece. I'm going to be honest with you. I was born here. I'm a, what they call a Greek American. I feel at times I'm more Greek than other people because of my family upbringing, Greek parents, Greek school, my affiliations with the church, with the Order of Ahepa, with the dance troupe, my church presently, my children all involved with Greeks, uh, a son who's a priest and everything. But yet, when I go to Greece, it takes me about two days to adjust to the Greek mentality. We're in Greece, the last time we're in Greece, I am at the Syndagma, and Eva says, I have to use the bathroom. Here's a McDonald's, by my mesa. While we're at McDonald's, I now have one of these little belly packs. But you, you also know. were telling me, be careful, be careful. Oh, yeah, I'm telling her all the time, prosex, shop. So I unzip this, and I've got some drachmas, and I'm looking up to see, and I get a kick out of seeing where you can, you know, here's a Big Mac in Greek, and here's, uh, they get selling beer and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and it's crowded, and I feel someone pushing me, and they're pushing, and, and, and some man saying, Sproxit, be gonna mess up, be gonna mess up, Sproxit, you know, didn't pay any attention, and, I, and all of a sudden this pressure on my back of pushing lets up, and it hits me, and I look down, and Two hundred dollars, four fifty dollar bills are gone from my. You were lucky. It was just that. Yeah, and I turn around to see if anyone's running or anything. Nothing. Oh God. Put that. And who are you going to call? And who are you going to say? It see? can happen any place now. Now that upset me greatly. Uh, I felt like I was raped. I felt like if I was a xeno, it'd be different. But I was Greek. 
I'm a Greek and I'm in Athens. Mm -hmm. This is my country. Mm -hmm. Who in God's name give you the right to take money from money people from me? Money is money. Uh, no. Greeks, gypsies, Albanians, who knows? I, I'm not throwing any... Whatever uh, they were, they spoke Whatever Greek. they were. Uh, yeah, they spoke <laughs> Greek. And Athens anyway. is not Greece anymore. Athens yeah. is... I mean, and, uh, Athens and you were used not, to being pushed in Greece, right. so you didn't... Yeah. Athens so is not the Athens we, they grew up with. I, I'm, I, I love Greece. I'm very happy to... I'm very proud that I'm Greek. We're going to Greece now, to the island of Patmos, for Nico's brother's wedding. Our plans are, Eva's already in Greece with her mother. I'm coming now with Nico, Elena, and Evan. Evan my three years old. Three years old, see. We're flying there. Eva meets us at the airport. With we my land. suitcase. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we've got, I don't know, between Elena and Nico, we've got about five suitcases, the large ones with the rollers, see. Mm -hmm. So we arrive at the International, but we're now going to fly to Samos, spend the night with some friends of ours that have a hotel there, and from there take the hydrofoil to the island of Patmos, see. We get in, we have to rent a Fortigo, a truck, to haul these five large suitcases and drive around to the other side to the other domestic terminal. So we arrive there, and <clears throat> Nico says, I'll take care, Dad, of the suitcases. You see, parta sitiria, and go up to the counter there. So I go up to the counter, and there's a copella sitting there. Sabromena tapodiatis. Cigarro stoki. Kerry. Paracalo kirie. And I look at her and I say, Yes. Oh, Americanos? He said, I says, No, he may alien us. I said, Nasta sitiria mu. Here's my tickets. We have reservations. So she puts out her cigarette and goes to her computer, click, 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 she says, all of that reservations in a canceled. Said, what, are you, what are you talking about? What are you talking you know, about? We had made all the arrangements. I says, here, here are my tickets. She says, I don't care what you've got, tickets, no tickets. Mm -hmm. She says, all the reservations are canceled. Well, I'm starting to cause quite a fuss. So she now calls the manager of Olympic Airlines, the guy, the big shot that's there, over, they look, they couldn't figure out, somehow or another mix up. He says, don't worry, Dr. Condos. He says, Tajumemeros, we're going to put you on this flight anyway. But as you can see on the Pinacapanoiki, it's delayed because of bad weather in Samos. Okay. So we sit around the airport. Now we're tired. I got a three year old granddaughter who is just. She was good. She is, was so is doing good, good considering yeah. we've, we've flown nine hours. I've had the fight. You get the Fortigo, <laughs> get the suitcases over, put up with this Copella and stuff like that. And it's getting later and it's getting later. So finally she says, Elate, tapame, we're going. See, we're going to go. It looks like we're going to go. So I says, fine. So we get the one suitcase, we put it up, it goes on the conveyor, and you know how it goes on the conveyor belt and it goes down the chute, you know, through the three bars, stuff like that. So we, uh, one suitcase goes, second, the third one, all of a sudden I says, wait a minute. She says, Tine. I says, those stickers, Bubazi, Sine Kerkera, Yarkorfu, Ego Tapame Susamo. Oh, Lato Sekana. I says, okay. Ferta piso, devoro. I said, what do you mean the boris? Otamperanane apti tripa, pane. They're gone. Now, I have switched. He's not exaggerating. I have switched to four letter words <laughs> in Greek and in English. Uh, you know, you can bring those uh, blankety blank suitcases back up. They just went through. It hasn't been 15 seconds. No, she was adamant about it. Once they've gone through that tripa, they're gone. We cannot bring them back. Tell us, Bonham, the flight gets canceled anyway. Mm -hmm. So we're left with one suitcase. Uh, Nico says, we'll leave it here. And they're going to go to Kerekera. My suitcases saw Kerekera. I did not see them that night. <laughs> and they came back. And they'll be in lost and found in the morning. But so also we'll Nico wanted to leave He wanted to leave the one suitcase and he wanted to receive. So, so we don't have no trouble. So we got, we got a hotel room. Six o'clock in the morning we come back. Go to lost and found. No suitcases. Kitame do, kitame. Tines... The porta was closed. I said, and I used a few adjectives. <laughs> they opened them up. Now nah, a little dolly there with our all suitcases, suitcases, all the suitcases. So we get our suitcases. We fly to the island of Samos. Now we aren't going to spend the night. So we got to go from the airport 
to the pier to take the hydrofoil mm -hmm. to go. Well, it takes two, two taxi cabs with all the suitcases mm -hmm. and all of us people, see? So we get to the the pier or the dock, and I said, you know, fine, so we unload all that, and we're standing there, and I see <laughs> way down there, a group of about people. About three blocks away. About three blocks away. I say to this one guy who's walking by, he says, Parakalo put the Patmos, he says, Oh, Kato Kihene. So, Drami. So, Halasha Metsipalitis is rolling. We ruined the rollers dragging these things over the rocks and everything to go about three blocks away because this bufo taxi cab driver <laughs> but, you know, didn't, it, didn't leave us off at the right place. I was place. talking with a friend yesterday and I said, as a woman, I will compare. Um, the experiences when I go to Greece is childbirth. Yeah. You go through it and you say never again and then nine months after you go through the same <laughs> damn thing because you love to have another child. Yeah. So I says I love to be in Greece and yeah. I, I don't love, um, I mean now that I'm in Florida I don't miss the... The ocean. I don't miss the, 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 the meros anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean if it's beautiful. I, I like where I am, I have my home and everything. But I miss the mentality of the people. Even, even this arguing, even this, you know, problems. Um, it's different. It's just, you know. Okay. <clears throat>